Hello, welcome to episode 38 of live.withcode.uk. I'm quite excited about this challenge um, because although we're focusing on string formatting, um, we're using a, um, a brand new 3D um, simulator for the Ingenuity drone that's on Mars at the moment. So the engineers in NASA are much more talented than I am. Their code manages to make the real Ingenuity drone fly up, hover at a certain distance, stay at that altitude, and then fly gracefully back down to Earth. Incidentally, this texture that you can see um, was taken by the real Ingenuity drone on Mars um, for our simulator. Now, the code we've got at the moment is attempting to get up to 2.5 meters above ground and then stay there. So we're gradually increasing the rotor one speed and the rotor two speed um, because there's two spinning rotors that go around in alternate, sorry, opposite directions. Um, but you can see we've got a really bad feedback loop in here. It spins up the rotor speed so much that when we get to our target altitude, it keeps going, it overshoots. Um, and then it switches off the rotors, so it falls back down, bounces off the floor. Um, so we've got to do a much better job of controlling this drone. Um, so let's get started and see um, how we can put this together. Um, I'm not going to delete all of the code. I'll keep some of it in and talk through where it comes from. Um, and I'll leave the challenges down at the bottom. Um, so let's have a look. So first of all, we need to import time. And that's so that we can have a countdown at the beginning. So we'll say four countdown um, in range. And I'll go for a five second countdown. So the start value is five. The end value is just one above zero. And then we want to go down by one each time. And we'll say take off in. Um, and then the variable we're using for our loop is countdown. Now that will display them all pretty much instantly. We want to slow it down using time.sleep. So we'll slow it down by one second each time. OK, so um, that's display the countdown. Before we get to that point, let's set up the 3D model. Now I've set up a class in here. You don't need to worry about this. We've got a class called Ingenuity. It loads in some 3D models um, for the ground and for the um, uh, Ingenuity drone. Um, and then it sets up some controls so that we can spin up different rotors um, to rotor one or rotor two and a power that's gonna be between zero and 100%. Um, and then we've got a method here which is like a function that's just called repeatedly to set up the physics. So we spin round the rotors at whatever speed was specified. We don't need to worry too much about that. We're just going to assume that it's working so that we can import it. Um, so the name of that um, module, that other file, is called simulation. Um, and let's say from simulation, import, and then the name of this class, which allows us to use the simulator. Um, ingenuity. Okay, um, so that will set up the 3D environment um, uh, and then we want to make a new drone. So let's say drone equals ingenuity, which is defined in this um, file just here. Um, so that should um, load the scene for us. We've got the Ingenuity drone, we've got the textured Mars um, surface to fly from. Um, so hopefully we can call these methods. Now what did I call them? Um, spin rotor. There we go. So drone dot spin rotor. We need to know which rotor to change and um, an amount, a percentage for the rotor speed. Um, so let's see. There we go, that's spinning at five. But we only want that change to happen after the takeoff. Now there is a, a, a physics engine in here. It looks like the thrust isn't enough to take the drone off at the moment. Um, so let's stop that all from running and make this happen after our takeoff. Help. There we go. So if we set both rotors going, spin, Rotor, rotor 2 at 50% as well. We should have our countdown. Both rotors should start moving. And is that going to be enough to make it take off? Let's have a look. Not quite, but not bad. Um, 
So the stop button at the top stops the main game loop for the 3D engine on here. Um, let's set up a target altitude and try and make it um, reach that altitude. So I'll define a constant up here. So target altitude, uh, let's say 2.5 meters. We'll spin up the, um, the rotors to begin with. Um, start up rotors. And we'll let them take some time to reach their speed. So time dot sleep for one second. And then we want to keep checking the altitude um, to see if we've reached the amount that we want. So maybe we should have a variable for the rotor thrust for the two rotors that are spinning round. Let's set that to zero and rotor two is going to be set to zero. OK, and then forever, whilst the drone is in the sky, let's say if the altitude, well, how do we work out what the altitude is? Um, we'll come to that in a moment. If the altitude is less than our target, which we've said on line seven is 2.5 meters, um, then we want to increase our thrust. So R1, let's say, plus equals one, and R2 plus equals one. So we're increasing the rotor speed. Um, and then we should probably um, work out what altitude is. So altitude is going to be got from our drone. Um, and then otherwise we can decrease the rotor speed. So this will decrease the rotor's one um, rotor speed. R2 minus equals one. Um, but we're not actually doing anything with these R values yet. So we want to use them in something like this. There we go. Um, R1 will set rotor one speed, R2 will set rotor two speed, and then we'll slow it down a little bit. Time dot sleep 0 0.01, something like that. Let's have a look and see. OK, so we run it. We should have a countdown whilst it's on the floor. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's see. It should then spin up the rotors. Um, but we've got to a point where our power has gone above 100. Um, so that's not good. And we also don't know what our rotor speed is. So we need to do a little bit of validation and we need to make sure our values appear on the, on the, on, sorry, on the screen. I'm going to slow it down so it only happens 10 times every second. Um, we need to put some validation in here so neither of these go above um, 100. Um, and do you know what, to be honest, I'll keep it really simple and just have one variable for rotor speed. And then we only have to set them both to the same variable. Um, it keeps it a bit simpler. So then we can use that variable twice. For both rotors. Um, here we go. But we're still going to have that problem of the rotor speed going above 100%, and then who knows what effect that will have if that actually happens on Mars. So, we're probably going to have an exception in here, and it's not actually taking off yet. Here, yeah. let's have a look. So, inside this loop, Let's put something in so that we can see what the rotor speed is. So let's print a message. Um, help. Uh, let's say the rotor speed. Um, and that is a percentage. So we're going to use string formatting here. Um, and I'd like it to be shown to three spaces, padded out to three spaces in case it's 100. Um, if it's less than three, um, three digits, then we'll pad it out with some extra spaces. Uh, and let's show the altitude as well. Um, and that's going to be measured in meters. And this one is going to be shown to two um, decibel places. OK, so let's use string formatting. Uh, this first set of moustache brackets, curly braces, is going to be the rotor speed. And the second one 
will be the altitude. All right, let's see if this works. Okay, so we've got our countdown. Then it should display the rotor speed. Um, does it ever get to above 100? We're kind of spinning up to 80% at the moment. Oh, and then as we get to a, over 100, it just stops. Okay. Um, so this is where we're going to need some validation to keep it less than 100. Let's see if um, rotor speed, um, in fact, let's just say if rotor speed is more than 100, then limit it. Rotor speed is equal to 100. And similarly, if we ever go down uh, below zero, if rotor speed is less than zero, just stop that from happening. Rotor speed is equal to zero. I'm also going to increase it by more than one each time. Let's go up by five each time. Um, let's see. Five, four, three, two, one. The rotor should spin up to 50 each time. And we've got a bit of a bug going on here because we've spun up the rotors to 50 before we start, but we've set our rotor speed variable to zero. That doesn't sound right to me. Let's see if we can fix that. There we go. All right, let's see if it hovers and how close to our target of 2.5 um, meters it gets. Okay, so rotor speed is up to 100. We're going all the way up to about five meters. We're decreasing the rotor speed so that eventually we'll fall back down again. You can use the mouse wheel to scroll or shift on the mouse to be able to move. Um, but it doesn't look like it's hovering all that well. So your challenge is to work out um, how much to increase the rotor speed by, how fast you're going to make this game loop run, um, and what checks you're going to need um, to make this drone um, hover at exactly 2.5 meters, and then see if you can make it do that for 2.5 um, at 2.5 meters for three seconds, and then change to a different target height to one meter for a couple of seconds, and then bring it all back down to Earth. Sorry, not to Earth, to Mars, um, nice and safely. <laughs> so this looks like it's bounced and it's fallen through. Um, okay. So remember, you can find links to um, uh, remote learning activities um, on live.withcode.uk or you can find um, them on compete.withcode.uk if your teacher signed up to the free um, uh, resources. Let me know how you get on and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.